Lagos, Nigeria holds a certain appeal for people from all across the country. It is the place where, if you come, work hard, and hustle, your dreams can come true. And that's exactly what Tomi Waziri had in mind when he returned to Lagos in 2019 after graduating from Kogi State University. His plan was to find a job he was passionate about and build a career and a life for himself in Lagos. But all that changed in a split second when a bullet rang out. Um, when I was out of school, I, I hit the street, <laughs> you know. I went to Computer Village, started my hustle. Um, I've always loved to fix gadgets, you know, iPhones, laptops, any type of gadgets. I actually started something for myself, despite the fact that I was learning under my boss then, you know. So, uh, but I needed to make things faster, you know. So that's how I started the Uber business, just to save up more money, add something, you know, just to, you know, add up to the business. <laughs> Tommy is the third child, but the first son of his parents. He grew up with his siblings and a single mother who loved her children dearly. She had a strong bond with her kids, but most especially with Tommy, who was always a happy child. Tommy's younger brother, Tolu Waziri, describes Tommy as someone who has always been invested in the happiness of those around him, regardless of how he himself was feeling. Tommy is a very jovial child, very lively right from his childhood. He's somebody that everybody around him loves. We were so close, like we've always been so close. Even back then in the university, we would always pass as twins. Tommy is charming. Tommy has always been to me like he has always been a ladies man, like I learned from him, you know. <laughs> However, this happy family would face their toughest challenge on the 12th of September, 2019. That was the day their lives changed forever. Like every other day, I picked up my keys that morning and I never knew that I will come back home a blind person. It happened around 8 p.m. I was parked at 1004 Estate on the island. And I was waiting for a request, but I didn't get it. Um, not until after like an hour, which was around 8. I was driving out, I was driving out of the gate, that's the estate gate, and before I knew, I was already saying, let me just go home, you know, and the request came in, and that's how I picked up my rider, and we started the journey. I'm always a man of integrity, so I, I would rather ask my client, if you want me to use the map, or if you want me to, you want to direct me, or you want me to use my own discretion, you know, so she said, let's use the map. Meanwhile, the map took us track from one bridge, Lagos. And I never knew that something was waiting for me there. You know, and that's how we went track from one bridge. There was traffic, hot traffic on the bridge. And let's say 20 minutes into the traffic, I saw two young boys, um, not more than 19. They're, they're, they're teenagers, let's say 18, 19. Um, they're passing by my car. And they were, I mean, the way they were looking at my car, they looked suspicious and I was looking at them. My phone was mounted. You know, we um, ELN drivers, we, might, uh, we always mount our phone, you know, the Google map and everything. So my phone was like a beacon, you know, it was obviously showing. So it passed the car and I looked through the side mirror and I noticed that they stopped at some point. Immediately I told my rider to keep her stops. And the next thing I heard was a knock on the car with the gun. And I saw the gun for the first time in my life, I saw it going very close to me. Um, <laughs> I started shaking. It's like a regular gun, but it's improvised. So I think what the police said they do is that they have this um, pellet. It's not a standard bullet. I wanted to reach out to my phone, so my vision was away from them. So I looked towards where I put the phone. And as I looked back towards this young man, the last picture I can remember was his face and a gun being pointed at my face. Damilola Okeolua witnessed the incident. She tried all she could to get help for Tomi. We were in traffic and then something really bad happened. I'd not even said Jack when I heard the gunshots. The other guy just came to me and was like, 
wind down your side, wind down your side. I'm like, please don't shoot me. You can take my bag, take everything I have. Please just don't shoot me. I was begging. And then the other guys had already climbed the bike, so he needed to join the other person. So he had to run. I got down from the car. I kept shouting. They just shot my driver. They just shot my driver. Nobody answered me. I think it was about the ninth car or tenth car. They actually waited he drove me down to the police guys and then they asked what had happened i explained to them and then they went to get them because i couldn't have done anything at that point i was really confused i was super confused this something of this sort has never happened to me before it was pellets so um it actually pierced my eyes it damaged my eyeballs um, if you can see my teeth actually broke my two front teeth. After like 30 minutes there about, like I said, I heard vo um, voice of two men, um, that's two policemen. They, they picked me up, then I was at the back seat. The other, um, the other policeman, which was the inspector, was be beside me. The other one took the steering. I started moving in the traffic. We got to military hospital Yaba at this point. Before we got there, they told me to give them my mom's number. I gave her the number, I gave the man a number rather, and before we got there, she was almost at military hospital Yaba. Like around nine, I first of all received a call. Are you, are you Mrs. Waziri Tommy's mom? Your son has just been shot. We are on our way to the hospital at um, Yaba military hospital. When I heard that Yaba military hospital, yes, I know. This is true, this is me. I was in a choir bomb. I was serving back then. That morning, around 4.30 a.m., my mom called me and she was sounding so down. She was, she was sounding devastated. And I was like, ah, mommy, what's up now? What's the problem? And then she told me that my brother was shot. While the Waziri family was praying for Tomi to pull through, doctors shared devastating news. Tomi would likely never see again. And that was where the depression started. So that's how I got the, the shocking news of my life that I'm going to be a blind person. I mean, who gets to hear that kind of news after 27 years of being a sighted person? I remember blood coming out from his nose. He packed it with gauze also, and the blood was still coming out. The eyes too, the blood was still <laughs> out. <laughs> so now, I have to talk to myself that yes, I have to be there for these children because they don't have father any longer. I have to encourage them, I have to encourage the sister too. I have to encourage Tommy too, because I know the way Tommy was. Tommy is a very passionate person. He doesn't want anybody to feel hurt. This was not what Tommy had planned for his life. He was planning to make money so he could marry his girlfriend, Anu. Before the shooting, Tommy had been avoiding her, trying to end their relationship, because he felt he wasn't financially stable enough to get married. I think this was just love. You know, I feel that she deserves better. She's such a wonderful person, you know. So eventually this happened. After like a month, I stopped picking her calls. She would cry. She would tell me that I'm not with you for the money. He was the one misbehaving. I'll use that word misbehaving then. <laughs> I don't know. According to him, he said he wasn't ready. So he said he was looking for money. I kept up calling him, but he wouldn't pick my call. So after the incident, his brother, Tolu, stepped in. I thought of Anu. That was the only person that clicked to my head. I was like, okay, I can't call this particular person. I can't call this and that. So Anu just came to me. I was like, Anu, it has to be Anu. So I called Anu. I said, Anu, Alpha, um, your, your boyfriend is in the hospital. They are shooting at you. He called her. She picked the phone. He told her. And he said she screamed immediately. She came into the hospital and she held my hand. I knew she was the one. Immediately I asked her, why did you come? After all what I've done to you, and immediately said, don't say anything, shut up, don't say anything. 
And for the first time I cried, nobody knew I was crying because there was bandage on my eyes. I'm like, why did you come? And that was, that was it since then. It's been wonderful. I was just sad. That's, why would this happen to somebody like this? Even though we're having issues then, he's such a nice person. So I was sad that how can something like this happen to this kind of person? Tommy's mother did not know how Anu would cope with his new reality. Doing what she thought was right at the time, she called Anu for a meeting. I remember calling her. I was like, Anu, come. This is not a Tommy you've known before. Tommy is a different person now. Tommy is blind now. Will you still go on? Will you still marry Tommy? And she laughed. And she was like, when she met Tommy, Tommy was not blind. And she cannot now, because Tommy is blind, and leave Tommy in this state. And that is not marrying Tommy. That is marrying what is inside Tommy. That Tommy is a very nice person. And it's not his physical body that is married. Not out of pity, no. It was out of love. Even though then I was having one this kind of feeling that uh, why not leave this person? You know, you guys have been calling now. You've been, you know, I just wanted to, but at the same time, my heart still goes with him. But this is one situation where love has conquered all. Through the doubt and challenges, Anu and Tomi overcame it all. They are now happily married and parents to a son named William. When it seemed like losing his sight will dash all of Tommy's dreams, his personal will to survive and succeed pushed through it all. Don't wait until life is no longer hard before you decide to be happy. He has learned to adapt to his new reality. Thanks to technology, Tommy now knows how to use a mobile phone and other gadgets. He has also written a book and now has a foundation that works with and supports people living with disabilities. Sometimes I just look at my son. It makes me feel bad. I'm not, I don't know how he looks. It is the only thing I think about, not being able to see my son, that still makes me cry till today. Tommy Waziri would likely never know what his son looks like or see his wife's face smiling at him, but he is grateful for his life and his family. Uh, well, basically, I would say that, um, you see, um, experiences happen, life happens to us, so um, like I, um, I'll say that um, these things, sometimes we cannot control them, but we can choose how we respond to them, you know. Um, it's a matter of um, your mindset. Um, every human being has been given the ability to make choices, so don't let what you go through define you. Tommy's story is one of hope, perseverance, and the power of the human spirit.